Pozole Verde is one of my favorite dishes. And that's what we're going to be making today. Today is Dia de los Muertos. A few days ago it was Halloween, so that means that we are now officially in the holidays. Today is Dia de los Muertos. So I'm feeling a little festive. It's one of my favorite holidays. Where going to go to some festivities after we make this. My family's coming over and you may even see my mom and some of my family here. Honestly, this is the very first time that I make pozole verde on my own. I've made it with my mom before. So in a way, if you're making this, I'm right there with you making it for the first time on our own. It may look a little bit overwhelming. This isn't a quick recipe. A lot of the Mexican dishes take a long time, patience, and in a way, love to make it happen. There are a lot of ingredients. There are a lot of processes. And I will try to make this as smooth as possible. Granted, it is the first time that I make it on my own. And I asked my mom for the recipe but I am making a little bit of changes and adding and taking away some things. So let's get started with the ingredients and then I'll walk you through all of the other things that we're going to need for this recipe. Let's start with the meat that's right over here. I have approximately 13 pounds of pork shoulder. We are going to use, as far as seasonings go, ground cumin, salt, Mexican oregano, and black pepper. To make the broth, these is, this is what you're going to need. I have here 30 tomatillos, two bunches of spinach, two bunches of cilantro, which are pretty thick. These leaves from the radishes, we're going to use them to make the broth. And I have four of these little bunches. Two poblano peppers, two jalapeños, six serrano peppers, two bell peppers. My mom also adds lettuce, an onion, and also another onion to cut up and put into the broth when we're cooking the meat off a head of a garlic. I use part of this to blend everything together, but then I'm also gonna use some garlic to put while cooking the meat. So we put onion and garlic into the meat when it's cooking to enhance the flavor. And so all of this gets blended together and it makes like a green paste that we're going to strain later into a bigger pot. I have two cans of just the canned hominy. What we're going to do with this is we're going to open up the cans and put it in a like a strainer. We're going to rinse them really, really well before we cook them. These are already pre-cooked, so pretty much what you have to do is just put them in the pot after the meat has finished cooking and just let them cook with all of the flavor so that it could absorb all of the flavor. We like to top our pozole with cabbage, onion, tomato, avocado, and of course radishes. Also top it with oregano. I am also going to make a salsa. This is what I have for the salsa. I have two jalapeños. I have eight serrano peppers, six large tomatillos, three garlic, and I'm going to use about a quarter of an onion. So other things that you are going to need for the recipe, of course, is a blender, because I said we're going to blend all of the ingredients we're going to need it to make the salsa as well. As far as where I'm going to cook everything, this is where I'm going to do it. This is the pot that I'm going to use. You can see it's pretty big. This is a 16 quart, and you are going to need a lid to be able to retain all of the moisture in. And now that we have all of that out of the way, it's time for coffee. I haven't had my coffee, and I can't cook and function in the morning without coffee. Go we'll get coffee if you need one too, and let's get cooking.
what I'm gonna start doing right now is actually filling up my pot with just water. And I'm going to fill it up about halfway, that way it gives me enough room to put all of my meat in there and just let it cook slowly. I've filled, not filled, but halfway, I have filled my pot with water. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start chopping up the meat. I always use a separate um, chopping block. I use plastic for my meat. I don't use my wooden one. It was time for the apron to come on. And I don't know where mine is, so I'm wearing my husband's. So I'm gonna cut the meat. I'm gonna cut it into pretty big chunks, pretty big. You can leave the fat if you want, you can clean it up if you want to. I like the flavor that it releases into the broth, so I will be leaving as much fat as I can. So just a question for all of you out there. Have you ever had pozole verde? I remember when I first saw it, it was at a company party when I used to work in like the fast food restaurants when I was still going to college. And I saw it and I was like, what is this? Green pozole? And then when my uncle got married, who lives in Colorado, we went out there and um, his wife's mom, so his his uh, mother-in-law, made a pozole verde. And I was still a little hesitant to try it. And then when I tried it, my gosh, it was like the best. And my mom got her recipe and it was amazing. So I think that the 13 pounds that I got kind of look like it's a lot, but Beef and pork, when you cook it in these kind of dishes, it tends to look like it's so much, but it does reduce its size after it lets go a lot of its fats and its, its juices, and that's part of what becomes the broth. So as you can see, I have the water, and I'm gonna put salt in it. And I'm gonna put quite a lot of salt, and then I'm gonna start putting in my meat. So I have kosher salt, and just kind of watch how much I'm adding in. So maybe about a quarter to half a cup of salt. And that might seem kind of salty, but like I've said before, try some, let it cook, and then at the end, try it for taste. I already have some meat in here with bone. Now I'm gonna start adding in the other meat. I have my flame on to high. And as you can see, the meat starts to create this kind of like film. We'll, once the meat is completely cooked, we'll just um, take that out. So now all that we're gonna do is put on the lid. And we're going to let the meat cook for about an hour and a half to two hours. And in the meantime, we are going to wash and prep everything else. So my family is here and you might hear a lot of voices, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to start prepping everything so you can see what I'm going to do. We're going to cut and clean the cilantro, take off the stems, put everything into a container so we can rinse later. Now we are going to clean off the spinach, take out all the leaves that are not good, and then also cut the stems and put them in that container. Now we are going to take off the stems from all of the peppers, put them in another container so that they can be washed. My mom is helping me take the peel off of the tomatillos so that they can be washed. Okay, so now I'm going to get the radishes and I'm going to pull them off of its leaves and the leaves are also going to be part of the broth. So I'm going to do that right now. And we're just choosing like the nice ones. So something like this, that's like really yellow, you want to throw that away. Rinse it also because they do have dirt.
I mentioned in the beginning that my mom used romaine lettuce, so we're going to use one head of romaine. We're going to cut the end and take off the outer leaves. And then we're going to give it a rinse, and this is also going to be used for the broth. We are now going to chop and peel the onion that we are going to use for the toppings, the broth, and the salsa. Okay, so now we have everything washed. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna start chopping up like the peppers so that we can put them in the blender and start blending everything. Not everything's gonna fit in the blender, so we're gonna do it in batches. Okay, we are going to fill it up to the four cup water mark so that it helps it blend. This is my mom. <laughs> Mi nombre es Angelina, estoy ayudándole aquí a ella. Me está enseñando ahora ella a cocinar. Fíjate que yo me enseñé a ella. She's helping me. She's not helping me cook. She's helping me prep stuff. Like she's helping me cut up the radish right now. Yeah, so this is how she's doing it. She's kind of slicing everything and then cutting it in half. So she's going to cut up all the radishes and then maybe the cabbage and everything that we're going to use to top the stuff on the, on the pozole. So right now I have all my stuff in here in the blender and like I said we're going to blend everything in batches and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pouring everything into a container so that I can keep blending. On the fourth batch, I started to add the broth from the meat so that I wouldn't continue to add more water. This is what the end product will look like and there look different colors here because I mixed everything differently, but everything's gonna go together. Here, I'm going to make the salsa in this pot I have all of the items in this container and I will be adding in all of the tomatillos. I have half of an onion but I'm only cooking a quarter and the rest I'm putting it in the blender raw. I have three garlic but I'm only cooking two and I am going to put one raw into the blender. I'm putting all of my serrano peppers, the jalapeños, and then I'm adding water to cover everything. While everything is cooking in the blender, we put the onion, cilantro, and garlic. We are also going to add some salt. A few pinches of salt and then taste it and make sure that it has enough. If you can tell, the color of the tomatillos has, has changed. So now that means that it's ready to cool off to put in the blender and make that salsa. Okay, so in here I have the tomatillos, the peppers, and everything else that I had already cut. And I put some of the water that was in the pot to help it blend. Okay, let's try it um, to see how it's on salt. Good on salt and it's spicy. So now my mom is opening the cans of the hominy and we're gonna rinse it. She's gonna pour water in the can and then just rinse it and then get all of that out. Okay, so we're gonna check the meat to see if it's ready. I think it's been cooking for almost two hours and look. 
it's like already falling apart. It's really soft and tender. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in the hominy and the chili and all the paste, the mixture that we made is gonna go all in here. Okay, so now we're gonna add in the hominy and more water if it needs it. And then start to give it a mix. You are now going to use a strainer and pour the green mixture that we made into the strainer and you are going to stir it and then press on the mixture so that you can release all of the juices. So just as I'm doing here, that is what you're going to do. And of course all of the green mixture isn't going to fit into one strainer so again like we did with the blending you're gonna have to do this in batches so repeat the process until all of the green mixture is in your pot so as you can see look at that really bright dark green color uh, right now I have it on medium high so we're just gonna let this um, and actually put it on high. We're gonna let it come to a boil without the lid on and I'm gonna try it right now for salt and see if it needs more. Oh my goodness that's actually really good. It does not need more salt. It's perfect. Okay so we have everything chopped up. Tomatoes, cabbage, radish, onion, limes, avocado, we have our green salsa. We eat our pozole with tostadas and then tostadas with sour cream like this. It just gives it a creamier flavor. I don't know. I don't know a lot of people that eat it this way. This is what the pozole looks like. See how dark the green is. Let me show you how we prepare it. I add a lot of cabbage. Lots of onion because I love onion. Tomato. Radishes. Diced avocado. As you can tell, everything is diced. Green salsa. Drizzle it over everything. Yum. And then I get some oregano and I crush it between my hands and then I spread it all over the plate. A squeeze of lime. How we eat it is we, we bite into the tostada with the cream and then we take a bite of the flavor. That's really good, but it needs more sauce. Me estaba torturando. So if you like this recipe, give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe, and enjoy. Adiós.